Question 1. What are the five key food safety practices to prevent foodborne illness? A. Washing, rinsing, repeating. B. Cooking, chilling, freezing, thawing, serving. C. Cleaning, separating, cooking, chilling, reporting. D. Purchasing, storing, preparing, serving, cleaning. Answer. C. Cleaning, separating, cooking, chilling, reporting. These practices are essential in preventing foodborne illness by minimizing the risk of contamination and controlling the growth of pathogens. Question 2. Describe the steps for proper hand washing in a food service setting. A. Wet hands, apply soap, rinse after 5 seconds, use air dryer. B. Wet hands, apply soap, scrub for at least 20 seconds, rinse and dry with a disposable towel. C. Apply sanitizer, wait for it to dry, no need for water. D. Dip hands in water, dry with cloth towel, repeat. Answer. B. Wet hands, apply soap, scrub for at least 20 seconds, rinse and dry with a disposable towel. Proper hand washing technique is crucial in reducing the spread of foodborne pathogens. Question 3. How should food handlers deal with cuts or wounds on their hands? A. Cover with a bandage only. B. Continue working as long as they wash their hands. C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear a single-use glove. D. Stop working until the wound heals completely. Answer. C. Cover the wound with a waterproof bandage and wear a single-use glove. This prevents bacteria from the wound contaminating the food. Question 4. Explain the importance of temperature control in preventing foodborne illness. A. It enhances the flavor of the food. B. It prevents the growth of bacteria by keeping food out of the danger zone. C. It speeds up the cooking process. D. Only important for frozen foods. Answer. B. It prevents the growth of bacteria by keeping food out of the danger zone. Proper temperature control is essential for food safety. Question 5. What is cross-contamination and how can it be prevented? A. The mixing of spices in food preparation. B. The transfer of bacteria from one food item to another. C. Using the same cutting board for meat and vegetables without cleaning. D. Both B and C are correct. Answer. D. Both B and C are correct. Cross-contamination can be prevented by using separate equipment for raw and ready-to-eat foods and by thorough cleaning. Question 6. Identify the temperature range of the danger zone for bacterial growth. A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 68 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. D. 135 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 57 degree Celsius to 74 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. This range is where bacteria can grow rapidly, increasing the risk of foodborne illness. Question 7. How should raw meat, poultry, and seafood be stored in a refrigerator to prevent cross-contamination? A. On the top shelf. B. In any order, as long as they are in the refrigerator. C below ready-to-eat foods, D, with fruits and vegetables. Answer, C, below ready-to-eat foods. This prevents juices from contaminating other foods. Question 8, what are time slash temperature control for safety? TCS, foods and why do they require careful monitoring? A, foods that don't require time or temperature control. B, foods that taste better when cooked at high temperatures. C, Foods prone to bacteria growth because they are moist and high in protein. D. Only dairy products and poultry. Answer. C. 
Foods prone to bacteria growth because they are moist and high in protein. TCS foods require careful time and temperature control to prevent foodborne illness. Question 9. Describe the proper procedure for cooling hot foods. A. Leave at room temperature until cool, then refrigerate. B. Place directly in the refrigerator. C. Cool rapidly in shallow pans or an ice water bath before refrigerating. D. Freeze immediately after cooking. Answer. C. Cool rapidly in shallow pans or an ice water bath before refrigerating. This method prevents food from staying in the danger zone for too long. Question 10. How long can TCS food safely remain in the danger zone before it becomes unsafe? A. 1 hour. B. 2 hours. C. 4 hours. D. 6 hours. Answer. B. 2 hours. Food should not be in the danger zone for more than 2 hours to prevent bacterial growth. Question 11. What are the critical limits for cooking chicken to ensure it is safe to eat? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit. 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit. 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degree Celsius. D. 175 degree Fahrenheit. 80 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degree Celsius. Cooking chicken to this internal temperature kills potentially harmful bacteria. Question 12. Explain the process of conducting a hazard analysis in a food service environment. A. Guessing which foods might cause illness. B. Identifying potential food safety hazards and implementing control measures. C. Only focusing on chemical hazards. D. Conducting analysis once a year. Answer. B. Identifying potential food safety hazards and implementing control measures. A hazard analysis is a systematic approach to identifying and controlling food safety risks. Question 13. What steps should be taken if a food handler notices signs of pest infestation? A. Ignore, as pests are common in kitchens. B. Use over-the-counter pesticides immediately. C. Inform a supervisor and follow the establishment's pest control program. D. Close the kitchen for a day. Answer. C. Inform a supervisor and follow the establishment's pest control program. Prompt action and adherence to a pest management plan are essential for controlling infestations. Question 14. Describe the correct way to use and calibrate a food thermometer. A. Guessing the calibration based on past experiences. B. Using boiling water or ice water to adjust the thermometer to known temperatures. C. Only calibrating once when the thermometer is first purchased. D. Calibration is not necessary if the thermometer is digital. Answer. B. Using boiling water or ice water to adjust the thermometer to known temperatures. Regular calibration ensures accurate temperature readings. Question 15. How often should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A. Once a day at the end of service. B. Only when visibly dirty. C. Before and after use with different foods. D. Once a week during deep cleaning. Answer. C. Before and after use with different foods, regular cleaning and sanitizing prevent cross-contamination. Question 16. What is the correct procedure for washing dishes by hand in a three-compartment sink? A. Wash with detergent, rinse with water, then soak in sanitizer. B. Soak in detergent, rinse with sanitizer, then air dry. C. Wash with water only, then stack to dry. D. Rinse, sanitize, then wash with detergent. Answer. A. Wash with detergent, rinse with water, then soak in sanitizer. This procedure ensures dishes are clean and free from harmful bacteria. Question 17. How can food handlers identify and prevent allergen cross-contact? A. By cooking foods at high temperatures to destroy allergens. B. 
using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic ingredients. C. Ignoring minor traces of allergens as they are usually harmless. D. Mixing all ingredients together to dilute allergens. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic ingredients. Preventing cross-contact is crucial for the safety of customers with food allergies. Question 18. What is the significance of the FIFO, first in, first out, method in food storage? A. It prioritizes the use of newer products first. B. It ensures the oldest stock is used first, reducing waste and preventing the use of expired products. C. FIFO is only relevant for non-food items. D. It is a suggestion, not a requirement. Answer. B. It ensures the oldest stock is used first, reducing waste and preventing the use of expired products. FIFO is an effective inventory management practice for food safety. Question 19. Describe the procedures for receiving and inspecting food deliveries. A. Accepting deliveries without inspection to save time. B. Checking the temperature, packaging, and expiration dates for all items. C. Only inspecting meat and ignoring produce. D. Inspecting deliveries once a week, regardless of when they arrive. Answer. B. Checking the temperature, packaging, and expiration dates for all items. Thorough inspection upon receipt ensures the safety and quality of delivered foods. Question 20. How should a food service operation respond to a food recall? A. Continuing to use recalled items to minimize loss. B. Removing the affected items from use and following the manufacturer's or supplier's instructions for disposal or return. C. Waiting for customer complaints before taking action. D. Donating the recalled items to minimize waste. Answer. B. Removing the affected items from use and following the manufacturer's or supplier's instructions for disposal or return. Prompt action is necessary to protect customers from potentially harmful products. Question 21. Explain the role of personal hygiene in food safety. A. To keep the food service environment smelling fresh. B. Personal hygiene has no impact on food safety. C. To prevent the transfer of pathogens from individuals to food. D. Only important for those handling raw food. Answer. C. To prevent the transfer of pathogens from individuals to food. Good personal hygiene practices are essential in minimizing the risk of foodborne illnesses. Question 22. What measures should be taken to ensure the safety of food during transportation? A. Transport food at room temperature for convenience. B. Ensure foods are kept at appropriate temperatures and containers are sealed to prevent contamination. C. Use any vehicle available, regardless of cleanliness. D. It's safe to mix ready-to-eat foods with raw foods to save space. Answer. B. Ensure foods are kept at appropriate temperatures and containers are sealed to prevent contamination. Proper temperature control and prevention of cross-contamination are crucial during food transport. Question 23. How can a food service operation minimize the risk of foodborne illness during outdoor events? A. By only serving non-perishable food items. B. Ignoring temperature control since the event is outdoors. C. Implementing the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand-washing facilities. D. Serving food quickly without worrying about storage temperatures. Answer. C. Implementing the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand washing facilities. Outdoor events require careful planning to ensure food safety standards are met. Question 24. What are the guidelines for effective pest control in a food service operation? A. Keeping doors and windows open for natural light. B. Using only home remedies for pest control. C. Regularly inspecting, eliminating harborage places, and working with licensed pest control operators. D. Ignoring small pests since they don't pose a significant risk. Answer. C. Regularly inspecting, eliminating harborage places, and working with licensed pest control operators.
Effective pest management is critical for maintaining a safe food service environment. Question 25. Describe the necessary steps for implementing a food safety management system. A. Assigning the entire responsibility to one employee. B. Purchasing the most expensive equipment. C. Conducting hazard analysis, setting up control measures, monitoring procedures, and keeping records. D. Implementing changes only after an incident occurs. Answer. C. Conducting hazard analysis, setting up control measures, monitoring procedures, and keeping records. A systematic approach to food safety management helps prevent foodborne illnesses. Question 27. What are the best practices for using gloves in food preparation? A. Reusing gloves for different tasks to save on costs. B. Using gloves in place of washing hands. C. Changing gloves between tasks and when contaminated. D. Wearing the same pair of gloves for the entire shift. Answer. C. Changing gloves between tasks and when contaminated. Proper glove use prevents cross-contamination and maintains food safety. Question 28. Describe the importance of maintaining clean and sanitized restrooms in a food service establishment. A. Restroom cleanliness is not related to food safety. B. Clean restrooms prevent the spread of pathogens that could contaminate food. C. Only the appearance of the restrooms matters. D. Customers don't care about restroom cleanliness. Answer. B. Clean restrooms prevent the spread of pathogens that could contaminate food. Restroom hygiene is an essential aspect of overall food safety. Question 29. How does proper waste management contribute to food safety? A. It doesn't. Waste management is solely about aesthetics. B. Proper disposal and regular removal of waste reduce the risk of pest infestation and contamination. C. Waste should be stored near food prep areas for convenience. D. Recycling food waste into meals reduces costs. Answer. B. Proper disposal and regular removal of waste reduce the risk of pest infestation and contamination. Effective waste management practices are crucial for a safe food service environment. Question 30. Explain the difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. A. They all mean the same thing and can be used interchangeably. B. Cleaning removes visible soil. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all microorganisms. C. Disinfecting should be done before cleaning. D. Only cleaning is necessary in food service. Answer. B. Cleaning removes visible soil. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all microorganisms. Each process plays a critical role in maintaining food safety. Question 31. What are the food safety considerations when serving food to vulnerable populations? A. Serving food as quickly as possible. B. Extra precautions such as avoiding raw or undercooked foods and ensuring strict temperature control. C. Vulnerable populations should only eat pre-packaged foods. D. No special considerations are necessary. Answer. B. Extra precautions, such as avoiding raw or undercooked foods and ensuring strict temperature control. Vulnerable groups require more stringent food safety measures to protect their health. Question 32. How can technology enhance food safety practices in a food service operation? A. By replacing all staff with robots. B. Through digital temperature monitoring inventory management systems, and staff training programs. C. Technology has no real application in food safety. D. Using social media to post food safety tips. Answer. B. Through digital temperature monitoring, inventory management systems, and staff training programs. Technology can streamline and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of food safety practices. Question 33. Describe the importance of food safety training for new and existing employees. A. It's a one-time requirement at hiring. B. Ongoing training ensures staff are up-to-date on the latest food safety standards and practices. 
C. Training is only necessary for kitchen staff. D. Employees can learn as they go without formal training. Answer B. Ongoing training ensures staff are up to date on the latest food safety standards and practices. Continuous education is vital for maintaining a culture of food safety. Question 34. What are the legal ramifications for food service establishments that violate food safety regulations? A. A polite warning. B. Fines, closure, and possible criminal charges. C. Public recognition for bravery. D. No consequences, as regulations are guidelines. Answer. B. Fines, closure, and possible criminal charges. Non-compliance with food safety laws can result in severe legal and financial consequences. Question 35. How should leftovers be handled to ensure they are safe to eat? A. Left out overnight to cool down. B. Cooled rapidly to below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, and reheated to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, before serving. C. Reheated only once and then discarded. D. Stored at room temperature for no more than 24 hours. Answer. B. Cooled rapidly to below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius, and reheated to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, before serving. Proper cooling and reheating are key to ensuring leftovers are safe to consume. Question 36. What is the significance of an HACCP plan in a food service operation? A. It's only important for manufacturing. B. To identify and control potential hazards throughout the food production process. C. HACCP plans are too complicated to implement in food service. D. Only for tracking inventory. Answer. B. To identify and control potential hazards throughout the food production process. An HACCP plan is a proactive approach to food safety. Question 37. Describe the food safety risks associated with sous vide cooking. A. There are no risks if flavors are balanced. B. The risk of undercooking and bacterial growth due to low temperature cooking. C. Sous vide enhances safety by preserving nutrients. D. Only the packaging poses a risk. Answer. B. The risk of undercooking and bacterial growth due to low temperature cooking. Sosvide requires careful temperature monitoring to ensure food safety. Question 38. How can food handlers ensure the safety of food served from a buffet? A. By allowing guests to use their hands instead of utensils. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils for each dish. C. Serving all foods at room temperature. D. Buffets are self-regulating and require no additional safety measures. Answer. B. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils for each dish. These practices help maintain the safety of buffet service. Question 39. What steps should be followed to properly thaw frozen food? A. On the counter at room temperature. B. In a microwave, under refrigeration, or as part of the cooking process. C. Directly in hot water. D. By leaving it in the sunlight. Answer. B. In a microwave, under refrigeration, or as part of the cooking process. These methods safely thaw food without allowing it to enter the danger zone. Question 40. How can a food service operation prevent the spread of norovirus? A by encouraging sick employees to come to work and build immunity. B. Regular hand washing, sanitizing surfaces, and excluding ill staff from working. C. Norovirus is not a concern in properly managed establishments. D. Using only bottled water for cooking and drinking. Answer. B. Regular hand washing, sanitizing surfaces, and excluding ill staff from working. These measures are effective in preventing the spread of norovirus. Question 41. Describe the process for verifying the effectiveness of a sanitation program. A. By visually inspecting the cleanliness of the kitchen. 
B. Using specific test strips to measure sanitizer concentration. C. Waiting for customer feedback on cleanliness. D. Only performing verification annually. Answer. B. Using specific test strips to measure sanitizer concentration. This method ensures that the sanitation program meets the required standards for effectively reducing pathogens. Question 42. What are the guidelines for storing chemicals in a food service operation? A. Store chemicals above food to save space. B. Keep chemicals in unmarked containers for ease of use. C. Store chemicals away from food areas and properly labeled. D. Mix different chemicals to reduce inventory. Answer. C. Store chemicals away from food areas and properly labeled. Proper storage prevents accidental contamination and ensures safe handling. Question 43. How should a food handler dress to minimize the risk of food contamination? A. With loose jewelry and watches as personal expression. B. In clean and appropriate uniforms, hair restraints, and minimal jewelry. C. Wearing any street clothes as long as they look clean. D. Changing into a uniform worn the previous day to conserve resources. Answer. B. In clean and appropriate uniforms, hair restraints, and minimal jewelry. Proper attire helps minimize the risk of contaminating food. Question 44. Explain the importance of supplier verification in food safety. A. Supplier verification is unnecessary if the price is right. B. Ensuring suppliers comply with food safety standards to prevent contaminated ingredients from entering the establishment. C. It's only important for imported goods. D. Suppliers should self-verify without oversight from the restaurant. Answer. B. Ensuring suppliers comply with food safety standards to prevent contaminated ingredients from entering the establishment. Supplier verification is a critical step in maintaining food safety. Question 45. What actions should be taken if an employee is diagnosed with a foodborne illness? A. Keep the diagnosis confidential and allow them to continue working. B. Exclude the employee from work and report the illness to the local health department as required. C. Only exclude the employee if they are symptomatic at work. D. Provide over-the-counter medication to manage symptoms. Answer. B. Exclude the employee from work and report the illness to the local health department as required. Prompt action helps prevent the spread of illness. Question 46. How can cross-contact of food allergens be prevented? A. By cooking foods at high temperatures. B using separate equipment and utensils for allergen-free cooking. C. Ignoring it as minor allergen exposure is not harmful. D. Washing utensils with water only between uses. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergen-free cooking. This prevents allergens from unintentionally being transferred to other foods. Question 47. Describe the best practices for ice handling and storage. A. Using hands to scoop ice directly. B. Keeping the ice machine door open for easy access. C. Using a clean, designated scoop and storing it outside the ice machine. D. Implementing an ice rotation system to use the oldest ice first. Answer. C. Using a clean, designated scoop and storing it outside the ice machine. Proper ice handling practices prevent contamination. Question 48. What are the guidelines for hot holding and cold holding of TCS foods? A. Hot holding at or above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, and cold holding at or below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. B. Both hot and cold holding at room temperature for convenience. C. Hot holding at 100 degree Fahrenheit, 38 degree Celsius and cold holding at 50 degree Fahrenheit, 10 degree Celsius, to save energy. D. No specific temperatures are necessary as long as the food looks fine. Answer. A. Hot holding at or above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, 
and cold holding at or below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius. Proper temperature control is essential to prevent bacterial growth in TCS foods. Question 49. How does the design of a kitchen impact food safety? A. It has no impact. Food safety is solely dependent on the chef's skills. B. A well-designed kitchen improves workflow and reduces the risk of cross-contamination. C. The more compact the kitchen, the safer the food. D. Open kitchens are automatically safer due to increased visibility. Answer B. A well-designed kitchen improves workflow and reduces the risk of cross-contamination. Effective layout and design are critical components of food safety. Question 50. Describe the proper disposal methods for grease and oil in a commercial kitchen. A. Pouring them down the sink to dispose of with wastewater. B. Storing them in containers and using a professional grease removal service. C. Dumping them outside to decompose naturally. D. Reusing them indefinitely to minimize waste. Answer. B. Storing them in containers and using a professional grease removal service. Proper disposal prevents plumbing issues and environmental harm. Question 51. What are the considerations for food safety when preparing plant-based dishes? A. Plant-based dishes do not require temperature control. B. Same as any other dish, including avoiding cross-contamination and following proper cooking temperatures. C. Only washing the vegetables with water is enough. D. Plant-based means it's automatically safe and requires no additional precautions. Answer. B. Same as any other dish, including avoiding cross-contamination and following proper cooking temperatures. Food safety principles apply to all types of food including plant-based. Question 52. Explain the impact of food safety on public health. A. Food safety has minimal impact on public health. B. Proper food safety practices prevent foodborne illnesses, protecting individuals and communities. C. Food safety only matters for high-risk populations. D. Public health concerns are unrelated to food safety practices. Answer. B. Proper food safety practices prevent foodborne illnesses, protecting individuals and communities. Food safety is a crucial component of public health. Question 53. How should a food service operation manage food safety during a power outage? A. Continue operating as usual, ignoring the outage. B. Discard all food immediately without assessment. C. Monitor temperatures discard potentially unsafe food, and use alternative safe practices until power is restored. D. Use candles to keep food warm. Answer. C. Monitor temperatures, discard potentially unsafe food, and use alternative safe practices until power is restored. Proper response to a power outage is essential to ensure food safety. Question 54. What are the food safety challenges associated with farm-to-table operations? A. There are no challenges since the food is fresh. B. Ensuring that all produce is washed with soap and water. C. Verifying the safety practices of suppliers and maintaining control over food safety from farm to table. D. Limiting menu items to only what is grown on site. Answer. C. Verifying the safety practices of suppliers and maintaining control over food safety from farm to table. Farm to table operations must carefully manage the supply chain to ensure food safety. Question 55. Describe the role of a food safety inspector during an inspection. A. To intimidate and find faults with the staff. B. Observing operations, identifying potential violations, and providing guidance for compliance. C. Tasting food to assess its safety. D. Checking only the expiration dates of ingredients. Answer. B. Observing operations, identifying potential violations, and providing guidance for compliance. Food safety inspectors play a key role in enforcing food safety regulations and helping establishments improve practices. Question 56. How can a food service operation ensure compliance with local health department regulations? A. By avoiding health department inspections. B. 
regular training, staying updated on regulations, and ensuring all practices meet or exceed standards. C. Assuming compliance is automatic without verification. D. Only focusing on regulations with financial penalties. Answer. B. Regular training, staying updated on regulations, and ensuring all practices meet or exceed standards. Active engagement in compliance efforts is crucial for food safety. Question 57. What is the importance of water quality in food preparation and cooking? A. Water quality only affects the taste, not safety. B. Poor water quality can introduce contaminants into food, making it unsafe. C. All tap water is safe for food preparation, regardless of source. D. Boiling water for 10 seconds is enough to make it safe for all uses. Answer. B. Poor water quality can introduce contaminants into food, making it unsafe. Ensuring the safety and quality of water used in food preparation is essential for preventing foodborne illness. Question 58. How should a food service operation address food safety concerns in a temporary outdoor setting? A. Lowering safety standards due to the informal setting. B. Applying the same food safety standards as indoor settings, including proper temperature control and hand hygiene facilities. C. Using only disposable utensils and dishes without washing. D. Food safety is not a concern outdoors due to fresh air. Answer. B. Applying the same food safety standards as indoor settings, including proper temperature control and hand hygiene facilities. Maintain food safety is crucial, regardless of the setting. Question 59. What are the guidelines for using microwave ovens in food preparation safely? A. Only using them to reheat coffee or tea. B. Stirring and rotating food midway through cooking to eliminate cold spots and checking food reaches safe internal temperatures. C. Cooking all foods on the highest setting to ensure safety. D. Microwaving foods in non-food safe containers for convenience. Answer. B. Stirring and rotating food midway through cooking to eliminate cold spots and checking food reaches safe internal temperatures. Proper techniques ensure food cooked in microwaves is safe to eat. Question 60. Describe the procedures for cleaning and sanitizing food preparation areas after service. A. A quick wipe with a damp cloth is sufficient. B. Cleaning with soap and water followed by applying an appropriate sanitizer. C. Leaving cleaning to the morning crew. D. Using the same rag throughout the kitchen to save on laundry. Answer. B. Cleaning with soap and water followed by applying an appropriate sanitizer. This ensures that food preparation areas are free from pathogens and ready for the next service. Question 61. How can a food service operation ensure the safety of food transported off-site? A. By packing food in any available container. B. Transporting food at safe temperatures using insulated containers and avoiding cross-contamination. C. Leaving food at ambient temperature to adapt to outdoor conditions. D. Focusing solely on speed of delivery, not temperature control. Answer. B. Transporting food at safe temperatures using insulated containers and avoiding cross-contamination ensures food remains safe during transport. Question 62. Explain the significance of the use-by date on food products. A. It's a suggestion for peak quality, but not related to safety. B. Indicates the last date recommended for the use of the product while at peak quality. C. Strictly for inventory purposes, without safety implications. D. Only applicable to non-perishable goods. Answer. B. Indicates the last date recommended for the use of the product while at peak quality. It's important for managing food safety and quality. Question 63. What are the legal responsibilities of a food establishment in preventing foodborne illness? A. To provide a disclaimer on menus, absolving the establishment of responsibility. B. Adhering to food safety regulations, training staff, and ensuring the safe preparation and service of food. C. 
legal responsibilities are only applicable to large chains, not independent establishments. D. Ensuring only visibly healthy staff handle food. Answer. B. Adhering to food safety regulations, training staff, and ensuring the safe preparation and service of food. Legal responsibilities aim to protect public health. Question 64. How should food handlers manage symptoms of nausea or vomiting at work? A. Continue working, but avoid handling food directly. B. Report symptoms immediately and cease food handling activities. C. Use personal judgment to decide if they feel well enough to work. D. Take over the counter medication and wear a mask. Answer. B. Report symptoms immediately and cease food handling activities. Preventing the potential spread of illness is crucial in a food service environment. Question 65. Describe the guidelines for using and storing a probe thermometer. A. Store in a warm place to prevent damage. B. After use, wipe the probe with a cloth and store it with cooking utensils. C. Clean and sanitize before and after each use, and store in a designated clean area. D. Calibration is unnecessary if the thermometer is digital. Answer. C. Clean and sanitize before and after each use, and store in a designated clean area. Proper care ensures accurate temperature readings and food safety. Question 66. What are the requirements for a food safety training program? A. Only the manager needs training, as they can instruct other employees. B. Comprehensive coverage of food safety practices, legal requirements, and verification of understanding. C. Annual review of the menu with no need for safety training. D. A one-time orientation on the first day of work. Answer. B. Comprehensive coverage of food safety practices, legal requirements, and verification of understanding. Effective training programs are essential for maintaining food safety standards. Question 67. How should frozen food be defrosted to ensure safety? A. At room temperature on the kitchen counter. B. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave if cooked immediately afterward. C. In warm water to speed up the process. D. By leaving it in the storage area to thaw slowly. Answer. B. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave if cooked immediately afterward. These methods prevent the food from entering the temperature danger zone. Question 68. What are the best practices for handling ice intended for consumption? A. Using a clean, designated scoop that is stored outside of the ice machine. B. Hand scooping directly for efficiency. C. Allowing customers to scoop their own ice. D. Reusing leftover ice in drinks for sustainability. Answer. A. Using a clean, designated scoop that is stored outside of the ice machine. Proper ice handling prevents contamination. Question 69. How can a food handler identify the source of a foodborne illness outbreak? A. By guessing based on symptoms reported by customers. B. Through thorough investigation, including reviewing food handling practices and trace back of ingredients. C. Assuming the most recently introduced menu item is the cause. D. Waiting for health department officials to determine the cause. Answer. B. Through thorough investigation, including reviewing food handling practices and trace back of ingredients. Identifying the source is crucial for preventing further cases. Question 70. What are the steps for effective pest control in a food service operation? A. Ignoring pests until customers complain. B. Regular inspection, exclusion practices, and working with a licensed pest control professional. C. Using over-the-counter pesticides exclusively. D. Keeping lights on at all times to deter pests. Answer. B. Regular inspection, exclusion practices, and working with a licensed pest control professional. Effective pest management is integral to food safety. Question 71. How should food handlers prevent contamination from aprons or uniforms? A. By wearing the same uniform for multiple shifts without washing. B. 
changing into clean uniforms at the start of each shift and removing aprons when leaving food preparation areas. C. Sharing uniforms among staff to reduce laundry costs. D. Using aprons to wipe hands instead of washing them. Answer. B. Changing into clean uniforms at the start of each shift and removing aprons when leaving food preparation areas. Clean attire helps prevent cross-contamination. Question 72. What is the proper procedure for handling a choking incident in a restaurant? A. Ignoring the incident to avoid causing a scene. B. Immediately performing the Heimlich maneuver regardless of training. C. Asking the customer if they are choking and calling for emergency services if necessary. D. Offering water to the choking individual. Answer. C. Asking the customer if they are choking and calling for emergency services if necessary. Correct response can be life-saving and should follow appropriate training. Question 73. How should a food service operation handle customer allergies? A. By recommending customers with allergies not dine in the establishment. B. Clearly labeling menu items with allergens and training staff on handling allergen requests. C. Assuming minor allergens do not require disclosure. D. Using separate menus for customers with allergies. Answer. B. Clearly labeling menu items with allergens and training staff on handling allergen requests. Proper allergen management is crucial for customer safety. Question 74. What is the importance of maintaining the cold chain in food distribution? A. It's only important for frozen products. B. Maintaining continuous appropriate temperatures from supplier to consumer to prevent spoilage and growth of pathogens. C. Cold chain practices are too expensive to implement. D. Refrigeration during transport is optional based on distance. Answer. B. Maintaining continuous appropriate temperatures from supplier to consumer to prevent spoilage and growth of pathogens. The cold chain is vital for food safety. Question 75. How should a food handler address food safety concerns in a temporary outdoor setting? A. Lowering standards due to the casual nature of outdoor settings. B. Applying the same food safety principles as in indoor settings, including hand hygiene and temperature control. C. Using disposable dishes and utensils exclusively. D. Prioritizing convenience over safety measures. Answer. B. Applying the same food safety principles as in indoor settings, including hand hygiene and temperature control, consistent food safety practices are essential, regardless of the setting 